Muhammad initially thought he was demon possessed. That the spirit that appeared to him that violated him spiritually, molested him spiritually, spiritually molested, molested him, making him feel as if he's going to die, was a demon. And that Muhammad, as a result of the traumatic experience with the spirit, tried to murder himself, kill himself, commit suicide on more than one occasion. Fact from the Muslim sources. Number two, the second fact, the symptoms of Muhammad's revelation prove in light of the gospel he was demon possessed, either possessed by a high ranking evil spirit or Satan himself. Okay, are you listening? The second fact I'm going to demonstrate the symptoms that Muhammad exhibited demonstrate clearly, as far as the Bible is concerned. He was demon-possessed, either filled of the devil or a high-ranking evil demon. Now, why am I going to use the gospel to judge him? Because, because, number one, the gospel that we have is God's true word. The Holy Bible is God's perfect word preserved right here. And I have it in the King James Bible. Okay. Number two, the Quran tells me to judge by the gospel. Surat al-Maidah, chapter 5, verse 47, I am told that as the people of the gospel, Ahl al-Injil, Ahl al-Injil, the people of the gospel, I am to judge by the gospel what God has revealed in it. Otherwise, I am no, no better than an unbeliever, an evildoer. It's chapter 5, verse 47. So let's begin with. The symptoms of Muhammad proving he's demon-possessed. These are the symptoms of Muhammad according to the Islamic traditions. Help me to help you focus. Don't be distracted. Help me to help you. I'm here to serve you. I don't want to burden you. I don't want to offend you, but please don't offend me. Let's honor the Lord Jesus. Let's make the most of these sessions so you can learn. Okay, all of the what I'm going to show you are in the sources meaning the links that I gave you. Let's begin. The symptoms of Muhammad when he would receive wahi, revelation so-called. Ready? Okay. Sahil Bukhari, volume 3, number 17. Sahil Bukhari, volume 3, number 17. Narrated Safwan bin Yala bin Umayya. Oh, boy, these, <laughs> these Arabic names. From his father who said, a man came to the prophet while he was at Jirana. The man was wearing a cloak which had traces of khaluq or sufra, a kind of perfume. The man asked the prophet, what do you order me to perform in my umrah? So Allah inspired the prophet divinely and he was screened by a place of cloth. I wish to see the prophet being divinely inspired. Omar said to me, come, will you be pleased to look at the prophet while Allah is inspiring him? I replied in the affirmative. Omar lifted one corner of the cloth and I looked at the prophet who was snoring. Snoring. The sub thought that he said snoring was like that of a camel. Like that. When the state was over, the prophet asked, where is the questioner who asked about Umrah? Put off your cloak and wash away the traces of khaluq from your body and clean the safra, yellow color, and perform in your umrah what you perform in your hajj, i.e. the tawaf around the Kaaba and side between safra and marwa. Okay, do you see the symptom? He would snore like a camel. Okay. <laughs> Oh, boy. All right. This comes from Imam Jalal al-Din Abdurrahman al-Suyuti. Al-Suyuti, the perfect guide to the sciences of the Quran. Al-Itqan fi ulum fi ulum al-Quran. Volume 1, page 104, translated in English. Pay attention to this. Ibn Sa'ad re related that Aisha said, Whenever the prophet received inspiration, al-wahi, his head would twitch. He would foam at the sides of his mouth. Very important detail. 
He would foam at the sides of his mouth. Don't forget that. Head twitch and he'd foam. Okay? See where I'm going with this? All right. Now, this comes from Ibn Kathir's The Life of the Prophet Muhammad, Al Sira Al Nabawiya, translated by Professor Trevor Lagasik, Volume 1, page 307. Al Sira Al Nabawiya, Ibn Kathir, translated in English by Trevor. Lagasik, Volume 1, page 307. Omar said to me, would you like to look at the messenger of God while revelation is coming to him? That's a hadith that we read from Bukhari. He raised the edge of his robe from his face while he was receiving revelation at El Girana, and he was all flushed, flushed color, flushed. And he would moan like a newborn calf. He'd moan. Dude, I can't believe anyone would leave this religion. The real miracle of Islam is that people think Islam is a miracle. Really, uh, right? Now, but let's continue. Sa'id Bukhari, volume one, number two. Narrated Aisha, the mother of the faithful. al Hadith bin Hisham asked Allah's apostle, Oh, Allah's apostle, how is the divine inspiration revealed to you? Allah's apostle replied, sometime it is revealed like the ringing of a bell. He'd hear like the ringing of a bell. This form of inspiration is the hardest of all. And then this state passes, passes off, and after I've grasped what is inspired, after that I grasp what is inspired. Sometimes the angel comes in the form of a man and talks to me, and I grasp whatever he says. Aisha said, now pay attention to this. Aisha said, verily I saw the prophet being inspired divinely on a very cold day, and notice the sweat dropping from his forehead. So he starts sweating, moan like a camel, foam at the mouth, his head would twitch, right? And he'd be flushed. His color would be flushed. Sal Bukhari, volume three, number 829. Sal Bukhari, volume three, right? Number 438. I'm sorry, number 829. I apologize. Volume 3, number 829. So there overtook him, overtook him, the state which used to overtake him when he used to have on being inspired divinely. He was sweating so much so that the drops of sweat were dropping like pearls, though it was cold, wintry day. When that state of Allah's apostle was over, he was smiling. And the first word he said, Aisha, thank Allah, for Allah has declared your innocence. My mother told me, to go to Allah's apostle. I replied, by Allah, I will not go to him and, and will not think but Allah. So Allah revealed, verily, they who spread the slander are a gang among you. Not done yet. He'd also suffer headaches and he would faint. Remember, headaches and he'd faint, flush color, foam, his head would twitch and he'd moan. <laughs> like a camel, right? Like a calf. Again, this comes from Ibn Kathir's Al Sira and Nabawiya, The Life of the Prophet, Volume 1, page 308. Abu Nuaym, Nuaym related from a tradition of Kutayba that Ali bin Ghurab related to him from Al Ahwas bin Hakim, from Abu Awana, from Sayyid bin Al Musayyib, from Abu Huraira, who said, when revelation came down to the Messenger of God, he would get a headache and he'd cover his head. With the henna plant to try to alleviate the pain. Okay, this comes from As Suyuti, Afdib al Khasais, and Nabawiya al Qubra, the awesome characteristics of the Prophet. Page 300. Abu Huraira narrated When the revelation came from Allah to the Prophet, it was as if he had fainted. With me so far? Yeah, that's ironic because you're in the medical field. I have an article showing that Muhammad was suffering epileptic seizures, a kind that was common among others like even uh, Socrates. Socrates would have epileptic seizures, and in those seizures he would have like images. And Socrates said that's when his daemon, his spirit would come and inspire him with his philosophy. Right? Anyway, now let me finish the rest of this. Okay, now don't forget the symptoms. Sahil Bukhari, volume 6, number 508. Sahil Bukhari, volume 6, number 508. 
Meredith Safwan bin Yala bin Umayya. Yala used to say, I wish I could see Allah's apostle at the time he is being inspired divinely. When the Prophet was at Al Jarana and was shaded by a garment hanging over him, and some of his companions were with him, a man perfumed with scent came and said, Allah's apostle, what, what is your opinion regarding a man who assumes ihram and puts on a cloak after perfum, per, perfuming, perfuming, Lord Jesus, loosen my tongue, Holy Spirit, save me from stammering? His body would sin. The prophet waited for a while. And Lord Jesus, make my voice pleasing to the ears of your <clears throat> servants for the glory of your name, the glory of Jesus Christ. Amen. Because I sure can't stand my voice. Okay. The prophet waited for a while and then the divine inspiration descended upon him. Amar pointed out to Yala, telling him to come. Yala came and pushed his head underneath the screen, which was covering the prophet. And behold, the prophet's face was red. And he kept on breathing heavily for a while, and then he was relieved. Now, this is the same event reported in three different <clears throat> occasions with not the exact wording. All right? So this was the same event, but it's reported with different wording. And each difference highlights the nature of his condition. Now, notice here his face was red. Right? His face is red. And what does it say? And he breathed heavily. Are you catching what's happening here? Thereupon he said, Where is the questioner who asked me about Umrah a while ago? The man was sought and then was brought before the prophet, who said to him, As regards the scent which you perf perfumed your body with, you must wash it off thrice. And as for your cloak, you must take it off and then perform in your umrah all the things which you perform in hajj. Now, did you catch it? Did you catch what you're reading here? Foam at the mouth, head would twitch, right? He would faint. He'd be like a man who fainted. He would breathe heavily, moan like a cow. He'd be flushed in his color, right? Faint. Foam, head twitch, <laughs> moan like a camel, and his color would be flushed. Are you now ready? Let me show you what the gospel of Jesus Christ, God's true word, says about these symptoms, that he was demon-possessed. Are you ready? This is all in the article. All in the article. Here you go. Okay, let's read. I'm now reading, right? Mark chapter 9, verses 14 to 27. Mark chapter 9, verses 14 to 27. Okay. When he came to his other disciples, he saw a great crowd around them and the scribes disputing with them. Immediately, when all the people saw him, they were greatly amazed and running to him, greeted him. He asked the scribes, what are you debating? What are you debating with them? One of the crowd answered, teacher, I brought you my son who has a mute spirit. Wherever it takes hold on him, it dashes him to the ground. And he foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth and becomes rigid. And I told your disciples so that they would cast it out, but they could not. He answered, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him to me. So they brought the boy to him. When he saw him, he immediately the spirit dashed him, and he fell on the crown, wallowed, foaming at the mouth. <laughs> he asked his father, how long has it been since it came to him? He said, from childhood. Guess what, folks? The Muslim sources say that Muhammad was demon-possessed since childhood because his foster mother, Halima, claimed that she found him on the floor in a comatose state like he fainted. And then when he came to his senses, he said, these two men came and opened up my chest and took out a clot from my heart. 
And then when his foster mother took him to his mother, Amina, Amina asked him, do you think he's demon-possessed? She said, yes. Yes. And I'm going to read it for you. Okay? Watch here. How long has it been since it came to him? He said, from childhood. Often it has thrown him into the fire and into the water to kill him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Jesus said, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Immediately, the father of the child cried out with tears, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit, saying to it, you mute and deaf spirit, I command you, come out of him and enter him no more. The spirit cried out and convulsed him, right? But it came out of him and he was as dead. So that many said, he is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand, lifted him, lifted him up, and he rose. And when he entered the house, his disciples asked him privately, why could we not cast it out? He said to them, this kind cannot come out except by prayer and fasting. Because that's how powerful this demon was. Everyone caught it or no? Now let me read to you what his foster mother said, Halima. Hanima, what she said about him when, as a child, he experienced the same type of possession. Okay, are you ready? Here it is. This comes from Sirat Rasulullah, the life of the Messenger of Allah, translated in English by Alfred Guillon, which I sent you the link to, pages 71 to 72. Get ready, guys. Okay. Some months after our return, he and his brother were with our lamb. So her child was considered his foster brother, Halima, Muhammad's foster mother. His brother were with our lambs behind the tents when his brother came running and said to us, two men clothed in white have seized that Qureshi brother of mine and thrown him down and opened up his belly and are stirring it up. We ran towards him and found him standing up with a livid face. Okay. We took hold of him, and I asked him, what was the matter? He said, two men in white, Raymond, came, right, came, I, and threw me down and opened up my belly, searched there and for I know not what, right? So we took him back to our tent. His father said to him, I'm afraid that this child has had a stroke. So take him, epilepsy, see, stroke. So take him back to his family before the result appears. So we picked him up and took him to his mother who asked why we had brought him when I had been anxious for his welfare and desirous of keeping him with me. I said to her, God has let my son live so far and I've done my duty. I'm afraid that ill will befall him. So I brought him back to you as you wish. So she asked me what happened and gave me no peace until I told her. When she asked if I feared a demon possessed him, I replied that I did. She asked me, did I think a demon possessed him? She goes, yes, I fear he's demon possessed. And since when? Childhood. This sounds exactly like the demon possessed boy that Jesus healed in Mark 9. Did you catch it? Here you go. Here's the link again. The same symptoms, and the child's father told Jesus the demon has possessed them since childhood. The Muslim sources say Muhammad was demonized, possessed of that demon since childhood, even though they don't acknowledge it's a demon. You, you guys seeing this? I just gave you the article, guys. Let me finish it. When she asked if I feared a demon possessed him, I replied that I did. She answered that no demon had any power over a son. Talk about wishful thinking. Why? Because he's your son? Right? Who had a great future before him. And then she told how when she was pregnant with him, a light went out from her, which illumined, illumined the castles of Busra and Syria, and that she had borne him with the least difficulty imaginable. Gee, that proves he's not demon possessed. In fact, if anything, the light that came out of your hole would be Satan because 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen 14, Amina says, Satan 
appears as an angel of light, right? If that's true anyway. But let's assume it's true. Thank you for proving that that was the light of Satan coming out of you. That you conceived the son of the devil, right? 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen 14 for documentation. When she bore him, he put his hands on the ground, lifting his head towards the heavens. Leave him then and go in peace, she said. Now, this comes from TPU's, Thomas Patrick Hughes, Dictionary of Islam, page 368. Watch here. The following story connected with Muhammad's stay with Hanima is related by Abu Fida. Abu Fida, page 64. He's quoting a Muslim source. When some time passed, Muhammad and his foster, foster brother went out to existence from the house when Hanima's son came to his mother and said, Two men clothed in white raiments have taken hold of the Quraysh boy and have thrown him down and have ripped open his belly. So Halima and her husband went to the place where the child was, but found him standing on his feet. And they said, what has happened to thee, child? And he answered and said, two men came to me and threw me down and ripped up my belly. Then Halima's husband said to her, I greatly fear that this boy has got the epilepsy. So they took him to his mother, Amina, and Halima said to Amina, I'm afraid he's possessed of a devil. I'm afraid he is possessed of a devil. But Amina said, what in the world can Satan have to do with my son that he should be his enemy? Now, I'm going to give you verses from the Bible in a minute, and I'm going to show you that Muhammad thought about killing himself and committing suicide. Can you show me, Muslims, can you show me a single example in the true word of God, the Holy Bible, where the true prophets of God, the apostles of Jesus, underwent the same experiences and exhibited the same symptoms that Muhammad did when revelation came to him. Can you show me any prophet falling to the ground in a comatose state, twitching, breathing heavily and moaning like a camel, <laughs> foaming at the mouth? Can you show me that? Can you show me that? Why is your prophet's experience with the so-called Gabriel so unlike the true prophets of God and Jesus' followers. Okay? Now let me show you Muhammad thinking he's demon-possessed. He himself thought he was demon-possessed and wanted to commit suicide. Let me give you the other article as well. I gave you both, but here's a link to the other one. The name of the other one is Muhammad the suicide, Suicidal Doubter. Here you go. There you go, guys. Save the material and use it. Now watch here. Sahil Bukhari, Volume 9, Book 87, Number 111. Sahil Bukhari, Volume 9, Book 87, Number 111. Okay? Read with me, guys. I'll read it, actually. Merit Aisha, the commencement, commencement of the divine inspiration to Allah's apostle was in the form of good, righteous, true dreams in a sleep. He never had a dream, but that it came true like bright daylight. He used to go in seclusion, the cave of Haida where he used to worship Allah alone continuously for many days and nights. He used to take with him the journey food for this day, for that stay, and then come back to his wife Khadija to take his food likewise again for another period to stay till suddenly the truth, Al-Haq, descended upon him while he was in the cave of Haira or Hira. I remember how to pronounce it. doesn't matter. The angel came to him in it and asked him to read. The prophet replied, I do not know how to read. The prophet added, the angel caught me forcefully and pressed me so hard that I could not bear it anymore. He then released me and again asked me to read. And I replied, I do not know how to read. Whereupon he caught me again and pressed me a second time till I could not bear it anymore. Squeezed the life out of him, man. He then released me and asked me again to read. But again, I replied, I do not know how to read. Or what shall I read? Thereupon he caught me for the third time and pressed me and then released me and said, Read in the name of your Lord who has created all that exists, has created man from a clot. Read and your Lord is most generous up to 
that which he knew not. So he gave him chapter 96, verses 1 to 5. Okay, before I finish the second part, can any Muslim show me the true Gabriel or the Holy Spirit or Jesus or God appearing to any true prophet or apostle or servant, squeezing the life out of them on more than one more than once, causing them to despair of life, thinking they're about to die in order to get them to recite revelation. Can you show me? Squeezing the life of them, striking horror and terror and dread in their servants, making their servants feel like they're about to die and not even comforting them. The second problem, here's the second problem. Are you ready for the second problem? Did Allah not know that Muhammad cannot read? Because notice it says, the Muhammad responded, responded, I cannot read. Did Allah not know that Muhammad cannot read? He knew, right? So can you explain to me why he would have Gabriel say to him, read, knowing he can't read, and then punishing him, torturing him, and demoralizing him as a result? And then when he says, I can't read, why didn't he ask him a second time to read? Didn't he get it the first time? Didn't he understand the first time that he can't read? So why ask him a second time? Did he expect a different answer? Well, if he expected a different answer, does that say that Allah is an ignoramus or Gabriel is an ignoramus? What would cause him to be able to read when he's already told him he can't read the first time he asked? And then the third time, he again asks him, read. What makes him think that now, the third time around, his answer will change and somehow he'll be able to read? Can you help me understand? Man, again, I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed. I'm not that sharp. So Jibreel assumed Muhammad was lying. So Allah couldn't tell Jibreel what was in Muhammad's heart. That he didn't really know how to read. Why would he think he's lying? Why didn't Allah say, hey, Gabriel, hold on. He can't read. He's illiterate. But then my response will well, thanks for telling me, Allah. Why send me to a man and ask him to read when you know he can't read and then allowing me to torture him and make him feel like he's demon-possessed? But then it gets worse. Jibreel then recites words for Muhammad to recite. He then says, Iqra, and then repeats the words. Why didn't Gabriel do that from the get-go? Why didn't Gabriel do that from the get-go? Why didn't he have him recite from the first time? And then another question that's even more baffling. What did Gabriel expect him to read when he didn't have any book? I'm really baffled. Gabriel, what do you want him to read? You don't got anything in your hand. Ah, but hold on, Sam, we're going to get you. We're going to get you here. Some other traditions say, <clears throat> some other traditions say, Gabriel appeared with a scroll. Yeah. Told you you can run away from me, Sam. I'm not going to run away from you. I'm going to bury you and your prophet. You ready? You, you behind me. You, 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 you just block. You did just block. Are you ready? Are you going to bark like Muhammad? You didn't have no answers. Okay, are you, you ready? Why did you... Are you going to bark like you your me? bastard prophet? Are you ready? I am ready. Okay, good. I am ready all day, okay. every day. Now, what I want you to answer for me, show me a prophet. Show me a prophet. Oh, shut up, you stupid why bastard. On Muhammad. You stupid oh. bastard. 
Can't even debate. All he says, why you block me? Peer on Muhammad. Stupid bastard. Muhammad wasn't a bastard. Dog of the devil. He wouldn't create people like you who murder people, rape their women, and sleep with children. You scum bastards. Either the Lord Jesus grant you repentance or give you what you deserve. Okay. Anyway, you guys ready? Now, my spit is cleaner than Muhammad. Lord Jesus, forgive me for spitting on Muhammad when my spit is too clean for him and his Quran. Now, did you know what some traditions did to solve this stupid, irrational hadith? You know what some traditions did? Some traditions said that Gabriel appeared with a scroll, a scroll for Muhammad to read. Okay, now, this goes back to my initial questions. Why did Allah send Gabriel with a scroll when Allah knows that Muhammad can't read? Do you know that? There are traditions where say that Gabriel actually came with a scroll. Okay, can I ask you, uh, guys, honestly, I'm not the sh smartest guy in the world. I'm not as smart as first and last. Better looking, but not as smart. Why in the world would Allah send Gabriel with a scroll to a man that Allah knows can't read? You see, no matter how you interpret this hadith, it's a huge embarrassment. So the real miracle is that people think Muhammad is a prophet, the Quran is a miracle. This is the most stupidest, irrational, incoherent, unintelligible, satanically wicked, immoral, filthy religion that I'm aware of. Right? Now, let me continue reading the hadith. I'm not done yet. Let's finish it. What was Muhammad's reaction? This is all in the articles, and I give you the link where you can read the hadith online. This is Sahih Bukhari again, volume 9, number 111. So now watch what happens. Then Allah's apostle returned with inspiration, his neck muscles twitching with terror. He was horrified, right? Terror, twitching. Till he entered upon Khadija and said, cover me, cover me. They covered him till his fear was over. And then he said, oh, Khadija, what is wrong with me? Then he told her everything that had happened and said, I fear that something happened to me. Now, later on in the narration, we read this. But after a few days, Waraka died and the divine inspiration was also paused for a while. So he wasn't getting revelation anymore. <clears throat> now watch this. And the prophet <clears throat> became so sad, as we have heard, that he intended several times. Guys, no, not once. Several times to throw himself from the tops of high mountains. And every time he went up to the top of a mountain in order to throw himself down. Gabriel would appear before him and say, O oh Muhammad, you are indeed Allah's apostle in truth, whereupon his heart would become quiet and he would calm down and would return home. Now watch this though. And whenever the period of the coming of the inspiration used to take too long, he would do as before. But when he used to reach the top of a mountain, Gabriel would appear before him and say to him what he had said before. Ibn Abbas said regarding the meaning of, it is that cleaves the daybreak from the darkness, 696, that al asba means the light of the sun during the day and the light of the moon at night. Did you catch it? Muhammad repeatedly tried to murder himself, repeatedly tried to, ki to kill himself, repeatedly tried to commit suicide by throwing himself off the cliffs whenever the inspiration stopped coming to him for a period of time. And every time that demon would manifest claiming to be Gabriel and alleviate his fears. Again, let me ask the question. Let me ask the question. Can you show me any true prophet of God? Any true prophet of God? After encountering God or an angel stricken with fear and terror and horror and dread. The the neck is the muscles of his neck twitching from fear, trembling with fear, asking to be covered like a child hiding under his blanket so the boogeyman goes away. 
and then repeatedly tries to murder himself, kill himself, commit suicide because the revelations would take long in coming to him. Can anyone show me that? And I'm going to show you what the true God would do for his servants when they were afraid. I'm going to show you that in a minute. Notice he'd repeatedly do that. Repeatedly. Now let's go and see what Muhammad initially thought. See, he goes to Khadija, I'm afraid, Khadija. I'm afraid. What are you afraid of, Muhammad? Let's see. Are you ready? Let me read another one. Okay. Let me see. We read that one because I have a lot from Bukhari, but let me just go. All right, now this one too, similar. Sal Bukhari, volume 6, number 478. Sal Bukhari, volume 6, number 478. Yep, let me read this one because I read volume 9. Okay, again, now watch here. Sal Bukhari, Sal Bukhari, volume 6, number 478. Let me give you the link. It's a long one. Here it goes. It's in my articles, but here's the link. Let me read it again. It, although it's the same narration, still it's good to re read more than one version. Okay, watch here. An angel came to him and asked him to read. Allah's apostle replied, I do, know, do not know how to read. The prophet added, then the angel held me forcefully, forcibly and pressed me so hard that I felt distressed. Then he released me and again asked me to read, and I replied, I do not know how to read. Thereupon, he held me again and pressed me for the second time till I felt distressed. He then released me and asked me to read, but again I replied, I do not know how to read. Thereupon, he held me for the th third time and pressed me till I got distressed. And then he released me and said, read in the name of your Lord, who has created, so on and so forth. Then Allah's apostle returned with that experience, and the muscles between his neck and shoulders were trembling. Right? Till he came upon Khadija's wife and said, cover me. They covered him, and when the state of fear was over, he said to Khadija, Oh, Khadija, what is wrong with me? I was afraid that something bad happened to me. Now, he goes to Waraka. Waraka sees him into thinking he's a prophet. But a short while later, Waraka died, and the divine inspiration was paused for a while so that Allah's apostle was very much grieved. Narrated Jabir bin Abdullah. While Allah's apostle was talking about the period of the pause in Revelation, he said in his re revelation, once while I was walking, all of a sudden I heard a voice from the sky. I looked up and saw to my surprise the same angel as he had visited me in the cave of Hira. He was sitting on a chair between the sky and earth. I got afraid of him and came back home and said, wrap me, wrap me. So they covered him and Allah re re revealed, O oh, you wrapped up, arise and warn, and your Lord magnify. Okay, guys, I'm really confused. What in the world is he seeing an angel on a throne? Why is an angel on a throne? What in the world is an angel doing sitting on a throne in the horizon when supposedly angels carry the throne of Allah? They don't sit on it. Hello, Muslims. Hello. Okay. Hello, Muslims. Now, this comes from Tariq al Tabari, the history of al Tabari, Muhammad in Mecca, translated and edited by William Montgomery Watt and M.V. McDonald, volume 6, page 76. Volume 6, page 76. Muhammad bin Abdul Ala ibn Thawr. Mamr al Zuhri, the inspiration ceased to come to the Messenger of God for a while, and he was deeply grieved. He began to go to the tops of mountain crags in order to fling himself from them. But every time he reached the summit of a mountain, Gabriel appeared to him and said to him, You are the prophet of God. Thereupon, his anxiety would subside and he would come back to himself. Okay, this one from Tabari is interesting. This again is from volume 6, page 71. Watch what he says here. 
When the night came on which God ennobled him by making him his messenger, and thereby showed mercy to his servants, Gabriel brought him the command of God. The messenger of God said, Gabriel came to me as I was sleeping with a bro bro brocade cloth. Brocade cloth. Remember I said a tradition says he came with writing? Parchment? And which was writing? He said, recite. And I said, I cannot recite. He pressed me tight and almost stifled me until I thought that I should die. I thought that I should die. He manhandled him physically, violated him to the point he thought he was going to die. And again, this is also confirmed, confirmed in Sa'il Bukhari, Volume 1, Number 3. Sa'il Bukhari, Volume 1, Number 3, the Prophet added, the angel caught me forcefully and pressed me so hard that I could not bear it anymore. When I said I could not read, I do not know how to read. Thereupon he again pressed me till I could not bear it anymore. And then again, and again from Tariq al-Tabri, the history of al-Tabri, volume six, same volume, Tariq al-Tabri, page 69, Muhammad bin Abdul Malik bin Abi al-Shawarib, Abdul Wahid bin Ziyad, Suleiman al Shaybani, ah, oh, these names, Abdullah bin Shaddad. Gabriel came to Muhammad and said, Oh, Muhammad, recite. He said, I cannot recite. Gabriel was violent towards him, violent. And then said again, Oh, Muhammad, recite. He said, I cannot recite. And Gabriel again was violent toward him. Violent, folks. Violent. Sirat Rasulullah, the life of Muhammad. Translated by Alfred Guillaume, page 106. Alfred Guillaume, page 106. So I read it, and he departed from me, and I awoke from sleep, and it was though these words written on my heart. Tabri. Now none of God's creatures was more hateful to me than ecstatic poet or a man possessed. I could not even look at him. I thought, woe is me, poet or possessed. Never shall Quraysh say this of me. I will go to the top of the mountain and throw myself down that I may kill myself and gain rest. So I went forth to do so. And then when I was midway on the mountain, I heard a voice from heaven saying, O Muhammad, thou art the apostle of God. And I'm Gabriel. This is Sirat Rasulullah, the English translation, Alfred Guillaume, page 106. What did Muhammad say? What was me? I'm either a poet or possessed. Because they used to think that poets, as well as Kahin, they would be possessed by jinn. So what do you say, poet or possessed? I'll never let Kresh accuse me of being possessed. I'm going to kill myself. Now watch this. This is again from Tabri, volume 6, pages 70, 71, which I read a part of it. But here's the interesting part. The Srib al-Tabri, volume 6, pages 70, 71. Then he went to Khadija and said, Khadija, I think I, that I have gone mad. Khadija, I think I've gone mad. Wow. Let me finish it, but let me give you this article. So hold on. Let me get you this article. This is a response to Jalal Abu al rub a Mohammedan, Salafi Mohammedan, who tried to deny that his sources teach that his prophet was possessed. This is Muhammad, folks. This comes from the Muslim sources, folks, not from Christophobes. There goes the link. Let's read it. There goes the link. Let's read it. I've gone mad. No, by God, she said, your Lord would never do that to you. You have never committed a wicked act. Khadija went to Waraka bin Nofal and told him what happened. He said, if what you say is true, your husband is a prophet. He will meet adversity from his people. If I live long enough, I shall believe in him. Now watch what. Tabari quotes Khadija saying to Muhammad, guys, be blown away. After this, Gabriel did not come to him for a while. And Khadija said to him, I think that your Lord must have come to hate you. Bam! Even his own wife started doubting. Then God revealed to him by the forenoon and by the night, when it is still, your Lord has not forsaken you, nor does he hate you. Let me repeat. Khadija said to him, I think that your Lord must have come to hate you. He hates you, Muhammad. Gee, what a very encouraging wife. Here's the link. Let me finish the quote. 
Okay. I recited, and then he des desisted and departed. I woke up. So Muhammad's talking about his experience. I woke up. And it was th as though these words had been written had been written on my heart. There was no one of God's creation more hateful to me than a poet or a madman. I could not bear to look at either of them. I said to, to, to myself, your humble servant, meaning himself, is either a poet or a madman. I'm either a poet, so I'm possessed like them, or a madman, I've lost my mind. But Quraysh shall never say this of me. I shall take myself to a mountain, crag, hurl myself down from it, kill myself and find relief in that way. Everyone got it? Now, with that said, let's compare the experiences of the true prophets of God. Everything I'm going to quote is in those articles, okay? So I'm going to be reading them. True prophets of God from my articles. When God's true prophets encountered the triune God, either the Father, the Son, Holy Spirit, or all three of them, or an angel, and they were afraid. What happened? Daniel 8, 15, 18. Daniel 8, 15, 18. Then it happened when I, Daniel, had seen the vision and was seeking the meaning, that suddenly there stood before me one having the appearance of a man. And I heard a man's voice between the banks of the Ulai, who called and said, Gabriel, make this man understand the vision. So he came near where I stood, and when he came, I was afraid and fell on my face. But he said to me, understand, son of man, that the vision refers to the time of the end. Now, as he was speaking with me, I was in a deep sleep with my face to the ground, but he touched me and stood me upright. What a major difference. He didn't demoralize him. He didn't torture him. He didn't squeeze the life out of him. He wasn't violent to him. He strengthened him and removed his feet and enabled him to stand. That was Daniel 8, 15, 18. So far with me? Okay, now let's read. This is somewhat lengthy. Let me read that last. I'll read this later. It's Daniel 10, but we'll read it later because it's long. Luke 1, verses 8 to 13. Zechariah in the temple. Luke 1, verses 8 to 13. So it was that while he was serving as priest before God in the order of his division, according to the custom of the priesthood, his lot fell to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. And the whole multitude of the people was praying outside at the house of at the hour of incense. Praying outside at the hour of incense. Then an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zechariah saw him, he was troubled and fear fell upon him. But the angel said to him, do not be afraid, Zacharias. Do not be afraid, Zacharias, for your prayer is heard, and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you shall call his name John. Now, who is this angel? Verse 19. And the angel answered and said to him, I am Gabriel, who stands in the presence of God, and was sent to speak to you and bring you these glad tidings. Guys, can I ask you a question? Why is it that this Gabriel that came to Zechariah didn't demoralize Zechariah? wasn't violent towards Zechariah, didn't squeeze the life of Ze out of Zechariah, manhandled Zechariah, but alleviated Zechariah's fear and reassured him and strengthened him. Okay. Luke 1, 26 to 35. Luke 1, 26 to 35. Okay. Behold, I'm sorry, wrong one. Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee, Gabriel again, named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and considered what manner of greeting this was. Then the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary. Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom, there will be no end. 
Then Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I do not know a man? And the angel answered and said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore, also that Holy One <clears throat> who's to be born will be called the Son of God. <clears throat> Two more examples. Both are somewhat lengthy. Revelation 1, 7 to 18. Revelation 1, 7 to 18 to see who appears to John. Jesus appears to John. Revelation 1, 7 to 18. Behold, he, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him, even they who pierced him. And all the tribes of the earth will mourn because of him. Even so, amen. I'm the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord, who is and who was, who is to come, the Almighty. I, John, both <clears throat> your brother and companion, in the tribulation and kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was on the island that is called Putmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. So by the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit empowered me, enabled me and transported me to see Jesus in glory on the Lord's day. Now I heard behind me a loud voice. So I heard a voice behind me. So the man was behind me. <clears throat> and his voice was of a trumpet, sound like a trumpet saying, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, and what you see, write in the book, and send it to the seven churches, which are in Asia, to Ephesus, to Smyrna, to Pergamos, to Thyatira, to Sardis, to Philadelphia, and to Laodicea. Then I turned to see the voice that spoke with me. So he wants to see, who is it speaking to me? Now he sees him. Watch his depiction. And having turned, I saw seven golden lampstands. And in the midst of the seven lampstands, one like the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the feet and girded about the chest with a golden band. His head and hair were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes like a flame of fire. His feet were like fine brass, and as if refined in a furnace. And his voice as the sound of many waters. Look at this majestic, glorious, beautiful appearance of our Lord. He had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword. And his countenance, his face, was like the sun shining in its strength. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. Fell at his feet as dead. But he laid his right hand on me, saying to me, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am he who lives. And I was dead. I was dead. And behold, I'm alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of Hades and of death. Everyone got it? See the major difference? Do not be afraid, says Jesus, as he appears to him in a glorified form. Gabriel, to Zechariah, to Daniel, to Mary. Do not be afraid. Fear not. So now the final example. Final example. Okay. It's a lengthy one. Daniel 10, verses 1 to 19. Daniel 10, verses 1 to 19. It's lengthy, guys, but I got to read it. Bear with me. It's all in these documents that I will post the links to in the description box and the comment section, God willing, Lord willing. In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a message was revealed to Daniel, whose name was called Belteshazzar. The message was true, but the appointed time was long. <clears throat> and he, he understood the message and had understanding of the vision. In those days, I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks, mourning from what he was seeing, troubled by what was going to be unleashed. On the earth, I ate no pleasant food, no meat or wine came into my mouth, nor did I anoint myself at all, till three whole weeks were fulfilled. Now on the 24th day of the first month, as I was by the side of the great river, that is the Tigris, this is in Babylon, Iraq, I lifted up my eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose waist was girded with gold of Uphaz, the gold of Uphaz. Gold that looked like it came from this place, Ufaz. 
His body was like beryl, beryl, his face like the appearance of lightning, his eyes like torches of fire, his arms and feet like burnished bronze in color. And I believe this is Jesus appearing to him with other angels accompanying him, right? And the sound of his words were, were, were like the voice of a multitude. And I, Daniel, alone saw the vision, for the men who were with me did not see the vision. But great terror fell upon them. A great terror fell upon them, so that they fled to hide themselves. They sensed something fearful and dreadful, a pre presence, even though they didn't see the figure. Therefore, I was left alone, and when I saw this great vision, and no strength remained in me, for my vigor was turned to frailty in me, because remember, he hadn't eaten. He was fasting 21 days. He was already in distress. And I retained no strength. Yet I heard the sound of his words. And while I heard the sound of his words, I was in a deep sleep on my face, when my face to the ground. Suddenly, a hand touched me, touched me, which made me tremble on my knees and on the palms of my hands. And he said to me, O Daniel, man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak to you. And stand upright, for I have now been sent to you. I have now been sent to you. While he was speaking this word to me, I stood trembling. And he said to me, said to me, stood trembling. Then he said to me, do not fear, Daniel. Do not fear, Daniel. So this is another figure speaking to him from the one that was there. For from the first day that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard, and I have come because of your words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days. And behold, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, for I had been left alone there with the kings of Persia. Now I have come to make you understand what will happen to your people in the latter days, for the vision refers to many days yet to come. When he had spoken such words to me, I turned my face to the ground and became speechless. And suddenly, one having the likeness of the sons of men touched my lips. Then I opened my mouth and spoke, saying to him, to him who stood before me, My Lord. So notice there's more than one figure, one of whom I believe is Jesus Christ. My Lord, because of the vision, my sorrows have overwhelmed me, and I have retained no strength. I have no energy. For how can the servant of my Lord talk with you, my Lord? So this one is obviously Jesus. He calls him, My Lord, I'm your servant. So there are two who are interacting with Daniel. As for me, no strength remains in me now, nor is any breath left in me. Then again, the one having the likeness of a man touched me and strengthened me. And he said, O man, greatly beloved, fear not. Peace be to you. Fear not. Peace be to you. Be strong. Yes, be strong. So when he spoke to me, I was strengthened and said, Let my Lord speak, for you have strengthened me. So you have two figures. One of them, I believe, is Jesus, God Almighty, strengthening him, whom he's calling Lord, saying, I'm your servant, and the other one who's speaking the revelation. So Jesus is saying, go ahead, tell him. Is it clear? Is it clear? You got the articles, right? You got the articles. You got the materials. You have my permission. Upload them to your sites, to your YouTube channels. Translate them, make clips. Guys, if you all start using these arguments, you will destroy, obliterate Islam. You will destroy, obliterate, efface Muhammad by the power of Jesus Christ, Muhammad's God and judge. You will cause Muslims to be embarrassed <clears throat> to even identify with Muhammad They'll be embarrassed and humiliated to talk about Muhammad. They'll avoid you like the plague and pray that God will then bring them to faith in Jesus. And those who refuse, at least you will send them in hiding, embarrassed, humiliated, ashamed of Muhammad. <clears throat> so all they can do is try to kill you. <clears throat> but you don't fear. Your life is in the hands of Jesus. And he's worthy that we live and die for him. Clear? Can you convince me that Muhammad's experiences were not demonic? Muhammad's experiences were not inspired by the devil, that he wasn't demon-possessed, or at least if it's not a demon, 
It's Satan himself. And if you ask me, I believe it was Satan himself who filled them. But just to be cautious, a very high-ranking, powerful demon, a demon of hate, <clears throat> a demon of lust, a demon of murder, a demon of blasphemy, a high-ranking demon of not Satan himself that possessed this wicked, filthy Antichrist. Right? Now, for many of you, this information wasn't new. But for many of you, it was. How many of you are hearing this for the first time? Are hearing this for the first time? And if you're hearing it for the first time, how many of you are shocked to see how clear the evidence is this man was demonized, filled with the devil, because his symptoms are truly demonic, completely unlike the true prophets, the true apostles, holy servants of God, when they encountered the true God or a true righteous spirit. And it even shows symptoms of epilepsy. I don't know if you're aware of it. And Shadda has confirmed it. I think she's here. There are types of epilepsy that cause you to hallucinate and see figures where you think that you're actually receiving messages from spirit beings. Did you know that? And I have articles on the symptoms of Muhammad perfectly falling under the very symptoms of an epileptic. But here's the thing, though. Here's the thing. L many of these seizures are not simply chemicals in the brain, but they're more than that. They are diabolical. Not every epileptic seizure, not every <clears throat> epileptic has seizures caused by demons. So don't get me wrong. I don't want you to misquote me. Some of them are just the, the, the firing of neurons in the brain that cause these seizures, and they're just part of the falling, fallen nature of our human condition. However, there are some forms of epilepsy that are demonic, meaning sometimes an evil spirit will cause someone to undergo epileptic seizures and exhibit epileptic symptoms where that person sees an actual demon. He's not hallucinating. He's seeing a demon who is inspiring him, but because it's an epileptic seizure, it will cause others to doubt that he's seeing an actual demon and simply brush it off as chemical reactions. You get it? What am I saying here? And I want it to be clear. Not all epileptics who experience epileptic seizures are demonized. Don't misquote me. Some are simply physical chemical reactions causing those epileptic seizures because of the fallen nature of our bodies, which God will restore when the Lord returns. However, some epileptic seizures are directly the cause of demons, where they then appear to you during that seizure and speak to you with messages. Did you know that Socrates had such seizures? Did you know that? Socrates, Socrates, guys, this brilliant Greek philosopher, testified that he had these seizures and he believed these seizures were caused by what he called his daemon. Daemon. Now, the Greek word daemon is where we get the word demon. But for the Greeks, a daemon wasn't a demon. It was a spirit. And he said it was the daemon who was causing me to have these seizures and giving me these philosophies. Because he believed that's when he was receiving inspiration for his philosophy, right? Exactly, Angie. So, but again, historically, when the Greeks said daemon, they didn't mean demon. Now, if you ask me, it was a demon, a fallen spirit that caused Socrates to have these seizures where the demon would appear as a spirit guide, inspiring him with philosophy. You want those articles too? You want those articles? 
showing Muhammad exhibited epileptic seizures, symptoms of someone who had epilepsy, but an ep epilepsy that was demonically inspired. His epileptic seizures were demonically inspired by a demon or Satan. Three start part response to Jim Al-Badami, who tried to claim that Muhammad didn't have epileptic seizures by lying through his teeth because he's also a demonic, filthy, wicked, spiritual dog, use of the devil, who's a wicked deceiver liar, and I have no respect for him. Here you go. Part one. And I even quote the very sources he cited to show he's a liar and misquoted them because the sources show that Muhammad's symptoms are clearly epileptic seizures. According to the very sources that Badawi misquoted to prove otherwise, because he has no shame, no honor. And in part three, I show that Muhammad's ep epilepsy wasn't simply chemical reactions. Muhammad's epilepsy was the direct result of demonization, demons causing him to have these epileptic seizures. And by the way, this type of epilepsy, you know what it's called? Temporal lobe epilepsy. Temporal lobe epilepsy. And the medical journal journals will tell you that this type of epilepsy causes people to think they are receiving revelations or information and being contacted by spirit guides, spirits. Glory to the triune God, Father, Son, and Spirit. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Jesus Christ is Jehovah God Almighty to the glory of the Father and the Spirit. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. We love you. We worship you. Cover us by your blood, Lord Jesus. Cover my loved ones by your blood. Our loved ones, my daughters, by your blood, Lord Jesus.